So hello, my friends. Uh, this uh, little exchange is going to be for only a certain group of people. And uh, so if you've got a pretty good idea about how things work and how this world works, and you're pretty comfortable with stuff, then you probably ought to not waste your time on this. If you if you believe that the way you were taught in school and the way they what they told you in your church and uh you know what the government and what science and the media has told you is largely okay and seems to make sense this isn't for you um if you think that uh, COVID just kind of happened and that the media kind of does whatever they want to do and they're kind of dumb, but uh, they're trying their best. And uh, if you think uh, the medical and healthcare community uh, has your best interest at heart and that... Um, the government uh, is, uh, again, I mean, they're bureaucrats after all, but I mean, you know, they're trying just, you know, they're okay. I mean, they're trying to do their job. If that's you, then go, you know, go do something else because this isn't, this is a little message is not for you. On the other hand, if you wonder about all these kinds of things, if you got into the place where you question what you were told and what you learned in school and what they told you in school, if you wonder about all these Bible stories and Bible story books to and you know and things and whether there really was an apple in a tree and a serpent and you know it wasn't literal but uh, it was probably maybe something else it could have been symbolic you know if you looked at the way the media operates and you have questions in your mind and say this doesn't make sense there's and you wonder about governments, of course, and you, you know, you know, and you don't understand why they keep doing wars and things that seem to be antithetical to humans and human nature and sustaining this planet. If you have all those kinds of stuff, then. Here, that's what we want to talk about a little bit tonight. Because that division down the middle there between those two worldviews, between those two paradigms, uh, divide, uh, are going to fundamentally divide the world as it emerges in the next few years, as it, is, it exists right now, for that matter. But it's going to become more acute uh, you you could think of it as timelines, as we have talked about in the past, of course, that are going, you know, diverging and going off in different kind of directions. But it's really um, um, fundamentally different worldviews, uh, and it's become very. It's going. It's become quite acute the difference between the two, and there's a very s significant kind of wall or fence that's being raised between the two perspectives and um it, it its origins have to do with kind of the essential thing that's going on right now and that is this emergence of a new human and a new world 
and this expanded her, you know, uh, awareness a lot of, that I've talked about. And the, uh, the, the kind of way you, in, in the light of all of that, if you walk yourself around in almost every direction in the environment that we live in, if you walk yourself around that and look at almost any major, the law, the education, energy, any, any of those things, what you find out is that every sector is fundamentally lacking, that there are structural, deep structural problems in every area of life. And that uh, they're only becoming more acute. The problems are become, only becoming more acute. That the, uh, uh, as we go forward, uh, be things become increasingly irrational. And uh, we've talked about this many times before and that it's all kind of a, a moving target. But I want to build you the logic of kind of a point of view and a perspective we need to have going forward. And that is that if the essence of who we are and how we define ourselves in terms of, you know, science, who we think, how, how we think it works, this whole reality work, in terms of what? Philosophy, cosmology, those kinds of things about how, who we are, um, the uh, history, you know, if you question, if you have any kind of sense that history is not what we've been told it is because there's all kinds of new things showing up and they've been keeping trying to keep secrets, the government and so on. It's uh, if, 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 if you kind of are getting into this space where everything is kind of unstable and moving, then you're kind of in the right place because that's this middle space between one stable state and the next stable state from one paradigm to the next paradigm. That there is this uh, disconnecting, if you will, from the old reality, the implosion of the old reality, uh, and the you know the transition over to an emergent new reality that then starts to solidify and becomes a kind of a solid platform that we can all operate off of, and then we will all see the world in a different way and ourselves in a different way, and it will presumably and hopefully turn into a you know a thousand or five thousand years of peace or whatever is on our horizon. But the point of getting from here to there, which is what we all have to deal with every day, is um, uh, fundamentally about uh, instability and unpredictability and all of the kind of things that all of our society is designed all of the formal as components of human uh, life behavior you know interchange are all based upon trying to produce stability and predictability what you want uh, is to be able to be able to plan, whether you do it explicitly or implicitly, to plan for a future that is relatively known so that you can do what you've got to do on a day-to-day -day basis in the most appropriate way for what's going to come tomorrow. And uh, so everything that we have surrounded and built up around ourselves is all based upon trying to keep 
the um, keep the machine going and making incremental changes rather than radical changes. The, uh, uh, the, the, the you can see the examples of that any of a number of places. If you ever, if you spent much time around the government, like I have, and, and uh, you have talked to senior bureaucrats, uh, they will tell you their whole reason why they got into the government. And these are bright people, and in some cases, very bright people. But the whole reason they got into the government was because they wanted stability, and they are conservative, and they just want this job that they could never get fired from that goes right up until they get this wonderful pension that take carries them through to the end of their life. And they are going to fight. They are going, it, it will be existential to them if you start to torque and screw with the, the system in some kind of a way. Because all they want is things to go. I mean, and if you're in the planning department of some large corporation, you want predictability. Boeing is now finding out, uh, you know, what the problems are with chaotic, unpredictable kind of things showing up that is kind of is playing havoc with them. And so everybody, everything looks for predictability. But this is not about predictability because what this is 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 fundamental kind of a ramp function change. Boom, up, up. Very short period of time, jump up to another, to another level. It's really a curve that's sweet, that curves up at uh, uh, ten times the complex, a minimum of probably ten times the complexity that existed in the previous era, the the, the computer era. Uh, and that was 10 times more complex than the kind of the industrial era before that. And so we're moving into some new kind of space that is radically different. I mean, 10 times what the world that we live in now is a really big number. It's a very complex space. And so, uh, so, so it is by definition, very unstable and very unpredictable and chaotic in the terms that we have because we are locked to the imagery and the patterns and the understandings and uh, the concepts that we brought with us into the room from the past that was a really different place. And so we're moving into this era of kind of intrinsic uh, instability, chaos, and transition. So, how do you how do you deal with that? The the what the, what you what you got to keep in your mind is that the new world is a borning all around you, or all around me, or all around all of us. The the little shoots, the the new kind of ideas are growing all over the place and the kind of the dynamic of how it kind of gets from here to there is that you get individual kind of ideas and people and concepts that show up and then they kind of aggregate and you find people and groups and organizations that kind of cluster around those new concepts and new ideas and um, and then they begins if it operates anything like uh, highly complex systems and state changes between in highly complex systems, what it happens is, and it's again like one of these S curves, is that the aggregate, you know, the new ideas and things kind of show up a little bit, a little bit down below, and you get more and more, and you get aggregation, and then all of a sudden the thing just really takes off and you start to get aggregation in larger t kind of terms and uh, in chemical, physical terms when you watch these kinds of things happen. Then all of a sudden in what seems to be a, in what is a very, very short period of time, suddenly you get 
a reconfiguration of the whole space of the whole environment around this new new set of ideas or new concepts and uh, and then it then it moves off into and starts to flatten off and become stable again in the new world and so if you're looking at that you know in the kind of terms that we've talked about before is what it looks like is everything comes apart pretty quick pretty fast in the next two three years 2027 probably is what a lot of things point at and then in the next three years what you've got is a reconfiguration and a reorganization and by the time you get to 2030 2032 it starts to flatten out and you've got a whole different structures, whole different ideas, whole different concepts about uh, who we all are and where we're all going. And uh, I don't have to tell you that that could be very weird in the way that uh, with the kind of variables that we've got flying around in, in this world these days with aliens and UFOs and rapid climate change and artificial intelligence and you know other kind of breakthroughs and atomic bomb you know new nuclear wars and everything is uh, that are just increasingly floating up to the top of this system and being kind of agitated around and her in ways that it's ne never been before this the language and the ideas that are being thrown around are just wild and un you know seem to almost be irrational talking about nuclear wars and yeah we could live with one i mean some general or somebody the other day was talking about oh no it's mostly psychological you don't have to worry about it i mean if there's a nuclear war well there are a lot of things that a lot of people don't know about in terms of what kind of the weapon systems that exist all around this planet right now. And they are horrific in their, their sim simplest manifestation and utilization. And so this is, uh, this is by definition, a very, very volatile time. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? What is kind of the fundamental mindset that we all have to have going forward? Well, I would suggest to you that it this all hinges around what I call permeability. Uh, what we're doing is here is sitting here, have, getting untethered and pulled unplugged from the old, the old world, the old stable platform that we all grew up with that made sense with us, that gave us hope and security and all, all those kinds of things. We're getting unplugged from that and we're moving toward a radically different kind of space that is emerging all around us. Uh, Lots of people talk about, uh, you know, the new human is going to have the ability to manifest and be able to see auras and to uh, do telepathy and all that. Well, those are not wild and crazy ideas. I mean, to some people it is. But if you play in the space where a lot of us play, but you know is that there are people all over the world that have those individually have those kinds of capabilities there's not a lot there's a huge numbers of them but they exist and uh and uh, so it's like that kind of those little shoots that are showing up that are coming up that show that are going to come together to become the dominant kind of paradigm going forward and so the process of getting from here to there is to be open enough to be permeable enough to allow those ideas to come through, to be able to see them for what they are, to see the rays of light, if you go, that are coming through the cracks on the fence, if you will. 
uh, and not get focused on the mainstream media and all those kinds of things uh, and what it, the people at work are saying and uh, who knows what the government certainly is promoting. Um, what we what we all have to do is and and it's a this is not necessarily easy because what you have to do is necessarily make yourself uncomfortable, right? You unplug yourself from those things that gave you stability and that gave you you know hope and the ability to plan and, and what you were going to do when you retired and what the pension was going to be from your company when you retired and, you know, fought four years or something like that. It's you, you have to unplug from those because the likelihood that those kinds of things will be extant in these coming years is increasingly yeah, decreasing, increasingly decreasing. And uh, so, so, so what you got to do is as quickly as possible start to see the new things, the new ideas, the new capabilities, these glimmers of light, these rays of light, like I say, that are kind of coming through the fence that are pointing toward this emergent new world. That's a whole mind shift. That is a whole mind shift that's, that, that moves you away from the idea of security and stability and predictability into this kind of floating middle ground that is based upon confidence and comfort and, and faith, if you will, in the process and what's, where we're going and how, it's, how we're going to we're gonna get there all right. And it disconnects you enough so that you can open yourself up to all of these other new things that are coming downstream that are probably significantly weirder and stranger than 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 we even know. I mean, you don't even begin to know what the implications of extraterrestrial life showing up here. I mean, there's and what that might be, there's any of a dozen different scenarios about how that could work. And every one of them is highly disruptive to the uh, kind of the conventional ideas about we, what we all have. And so the um, process of this kind of permeability, this openness, means that there's this, this constant kind of questioning that's going on this that you you take nothing for granted you take you look you look at things that show up and new discoveries or new ideas or new thing and you and you and you're always trying to contextualize them this is this this is a part of this leaning forward process that we've talked about and into this change is that you've got you've got to You've got to take 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 on the things that are happening around us and realize that they have significance. Uh, they have the potential of having far more significance than what's a, a, a obvious at the moment. And the only way that you learn, you figure that out, is by questioning it, saying, "What might that mean? What what you know?" This is the value of doing scenarios, by the way, because you can posit alternative futures if you've done this in a robust and um, you know sophisticated way you can posit these futures and now you can look at how things happen on a day-to-day -day basis and you can say which world is this trending toward is it going toward that one or that one or that one and you can then contextualize what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of what you've pre you you've thought about, and you've you 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 have a, an organized uh, a kind of possibility, a scenario about where that might go. 
this it makes a huge difference in your life because in, in my case at least there is nothing passive about how i look at the world everything that i see everything that i hear there's a little loop that goes on and says what's that mean what's that related to where's that going i mean is that is that true if that if that's true what does that mean if you know it's always this this uh, uh there you, it's driven by the explicit understanding that nothing that you know, you think you know, is necessarily true. That everything is transient. And you're moving in the same way through space as, you know, any other time in history where they thought of, you know, that angels danced on the head of a pin or the earth was flat or the whatever or the uh you know that's earth was the center of the universe or any any of those ideas well i mean i was talking to a friend of mine the other day so just reminded him that you know 120 years ago they were still bleeding people in order to get the humors out of them or whatever in order to supposedly make them better after they were already sick and they were running around with bags full of leeches in order to suck their blood you know i mean and they thought that was you know that was the best idea that at the, the time they, they really believed that you know and you've got to presume Unless you really, like I said at the beginning, if you've got this all figured out, then you don't have anything to worry about. But if you don't think it's all figured out, then you might come to the conclusion that this is just a stage and we're moving through time. And then the things that we think we know and we think we understand, we probably in 10 years at the rate of change this is going, are going to figure out that it doesn't work that way at all. I mean, one example is this whole idea of living in a simulation. We don't even begin to understand what that might mean if that turns out that we really solidify and get to where that becomes the principal kind of framework and paradigm for how we think of how this whole existence and reality works then we're all going to just be driven to the back of the room just saying whoa who are we and who's wrote the program and where does it go after that and then does the machine die or does it reset and then what you know it's just wild and crazy but that's the relative magnitude and significance of the stuff that we're up against and the same thing with ai kind of like times 10 and where that's going and what it means about being a human and everything so what you got to do is rather than rather than take that stuff on which is kind of passive you have to be active about it all you have to look it in the eye and you say what are they doing? What's this? Uh, what's this AI thing about? I mean, what's this newest thing that they talk about, and where where will that go? So now they're talking about you know I just read some yesterday or the day before about they're now introducing inter trying to introduce forgetfulness into the AI, and you say you got you got to say, what does that mean? Why would they do that? What are they trying to do? You know, there's some, it's a bigger kind of framework. And you, when you like Penny and Penny Kelly and Greg Braden and I spent some time together and we started looking at all the stuff that were going on in the world and what we, what we all kind of looked at each other and agreed is said that there are, most of the things that are going on in the world right now have no value to human beings. 
they are counterproductive. They're antithetical to the to sus, sustenance of the sustaining life. They are, and then you got to keep backing away and say, "So what is going on? I mean, who is driving this? It's got to make sense to somebody. There's something that." because it all makes sense at some level you just don't understand it and so, you know and that then drives you rather quickly into saying well what it looks like is that they you know there's some force outside of this world that is that is behind all of this because they're not human and and, and, and they're trying to get rid of humanity or depress suppress humanity or control humanity but the point is for all of us, no matter, you don't have to think all the big thoughts and the big ideas like that. But every day you got to say, you got to be questioning and saying, what is this about? If the financial system craters, what are we going to do? If you can't get food, what are we going to do? It's just an extension of those simple kinds of things. You got, we have to lean into this. And we have to look for the new ideas because I promise you there are a whole lot of very smart people who are, and you're not aware of them and I'm not aware of them, but they're out there trying to solve these problems. They're trying to solve the problem of the internet. They're trying to solve the problem of the government controls and other kind of stuff. And they're trying to invent new things. And if they're inventing it, they're not telling you about it because they're, necessarily in a stealth mode because if they stood up they'd get shot and so they're not going to do that right now but the time is going to come and it's happening that it's all they're going to things and new ideas and new stuff is going to come together that you just have never anticipated i'll give you an example one i have a quantum physicist friend who has um, a patent and figured out how that you can build a handheld communications device, call it a telephone, if you will, that's based upon scalar energy rather than electromagnetics, like all of radio and communications that exist on this planet are now. And this handheld device will allow you to speak to any place in the universe instantaneously because it's instantaneous and it will be you know it'll be like one of those big remember the early ages of cell phones when they had the big bricks with a with an antenna that was about that high on the top of the thing it'll be about like that to start with but the point is that you'll be able to talk to somebody instantaneously on the other side of the planet because the signal goes right through the middle of the earth. And when you got stuff like that, and you can, I don't know what it means that you can communicate anywhere else in, in the universe. I don't know what that means. I don't know what one of those kind of radios looks like. I don't know how you tune one of those and what you find when you come across certain kind of signals. I don't know. But there's, just amazing kind of things that are coming downstream through this all. And if you don't, if you're not sensitive to it, if you're not questioning, then you're going to miss it and you're going to miss the implications. And I'm telling you that the, uh, the, the way you get from here to there is not only being open to ideas, being able to, but to know those, that there are ideas, because if you don't have the ideas and you don't have the new stuff, then you're flying blind and then all you're doing, you know, and maybe this new world is so much based upon intuition and emotions that that carries us into some new space. And I'm certainly open to that kind of possibility, but it's uh, hard to make it for me to make any kind of a case for ignorance in the face of all of the, all of this. And, uh, I can make a pretty positive and, and powerful case, I think, for for being uh, knowledgeable and having some ideas about where this is all going, which, by the way, gives you hope. Uh, it's hard to build hope on um, just uh, 
hope, you know. <laughs> it's hard to build hope on hope. <laughs> yeah. So um there there when you find people who are li- who are interested like this, who are this head, there's this kind of applied curiosity is what it is really that you can that you're always looking for stuff and wondering how it works and trying to do this and trying to hook it together and and um and questioning what it all means i mean that those are a lot of people with their with the light and brightness in their eyes and they're going places and they're going to be part of this new world and that's the best way to get from here to there it seems to me and so you need to be permeable we all need to be open and we need to be looking for the little flashes of light and innovation and creativity and you know insights that uh, that uh, allow us to uh, come together around a new human and a new world so thanks <laughs>